find a lot of applicants maybe leave things out because okay. they say, I had this job for only a day. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ صلی اللہ محمد وعلیٰ علیہ محمد السلام علیکم اینڈ ہیلو ایوری ون آئی ایم ہیئر ٹوڈے ود مائی پروگرام اویرنس وتھ فہاد ایز یو گائز آر ویئر آف اٹ دیٹ لاسٹ ٹائم وی ہیو ڈن دا فرسٹ ایپیسوڈ آف اوور شو کیریئر ان آر سی ایم پی اینڈ بیسڈ آن دا فیڈ بیک آئی گاڈ وی ہیو ڈسائڈیڈ ٹو گو ود دا سیکنڈ ایپیسوڈ اینڈ ان دس ایپیسوڈ وی ول ڈو اے ڈیپ ڈائیو ان ٹو دا ہول پروسیس سو ہیئر وی آر اگین ود مائی گیسٹ Kesar Chaudhary, who's here with us today. And thank you, Kesar Bhai, for joining my show, Awareness with Fahad. And we have also Imran Saeed, who's currently working as a recruiting officer based in Markham. So guys, I want to thank you both of you guys uh, that you guys have taken out your precious time and you're here with me. Uh, in today's program, uh, we will cover the step, basically steps for the new application, as well as what happened during the interview process, right? And this time we will cover the use cases, you know, what, uh, you know, somebody has to go through it. And when they join the training, what sort of a use cases they can tell my viewers about it. And same way, if they have uh, if they face any challenges during uh, the initial placement. Okay, uh, so uh, Imran Bhai, I will start with you. Uh, so when somebody uh, is interested in, in joining RCMP, and of course, they have to fill out the application, right? So what are the key elements of the application? You want to tell my viewers about it? Yeah, so the application process is quite lengthy. It is very involved. Okay. Um, so it is very important for our applicants, for anyone who's interested, is to really uh, make sure you're reading the application okay. and make sure you're answering all the questions fully and okay. accurately. Uh, we get a lot of uh, people who apply to the RCMP who unfortunately may leave information out, mm -hmm. uh, may misunderstand a question and don't provide the information. Do you have any use case for that? Like any examples that you want to show with my viewers? Yes. So one of the things we look for is a very... Uh, Uh, thorough background investigation, okay. for example. So we go back in someone's life about approximately 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that involves uh, where someone has lived, worked, gone to school, okay. maybe volunteered. And so people get a little bit confused. Um, they maybe had a job for a couple of weeks or maybe a month or so right. and left that job and moved on to do an, another job. Well, right. we still want to know about that one job that you had for okay. even if it was a single day. Even mm -hmm. if we only had that job for a day, it is very important for us to uh, to know about that job just as a overall application right, right. and for a background investigation. So that's that's one of the steps where we find a lot of applicants maybe leave things out because okay. they say, I had this job for only a day. I, I'm not going to so, put it So on. basically, like if I'm if I have done four jobs, right? So you guys are going to contact all the jobs uh, like a manager? Or whatever, the supervisor or, or colleague or something uh, like that? Not or? necessarily. Okay. Um, but we do want to know about. We want to know how long you work there, what the company is. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it, again, it depends. Uh, we're, we want to make sure that you were an upstanding citizen. You were paying your income taxes. Okay. Um, that the company is a reputable company. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, if you worked there for a very short amount of mm -hmm. time, why you only worked for a short amount of time? What if, if, if a person is coming from, from India or Pakistan, right? And he's a, he's a new Canadian citizen, right? Yeah. Of course, he, he has a background back home, right? In India and Pakistan. So can he put the references and, and company over there? Too? Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. And we, and we, and so in those cases, we will, we will reach out to those companies, those individuals, okay. uh, and verify the information. Um, <laughs> we potentially could, uh, work with, uh, police services, mm -hmm. uh, for other countries okay. to gather information about you. So it is very important. It is, very important. Uh, it, it is also very involved. What so, other key elements, uh, you think, uh, you know, you guys pay attention to? Uh, so every applicant's a little different. Mm -hmm. um, so we not we we don't necessarily assume that you're going to have a very high level post secondary education. It's mm -hmm. not a requirement, okay. um, but certainly is something we look for in our applications. Um, you know, so it really depends on the individual. What about languages? Does languages play a big role in in, in selection process? Uh, it does. Like Kasar right here, uh, you know, it's, it's yeah, very, very. You want to you want to make annoying. some points about sure. that? Um, I want to add on, um, as you said, that uh, what mm -hmm. we specifically look in are, as uh, Imran said, that we do not want to miss anything. Right. Uh, we, I want to uh, bring everybody and just a basic point that do not 
think what is important important from your point of view uh -huh. that's why we we said it like right. do not choose what you think is important for you or uh -huh. not just let us know whatever you yeah. did be and transparent i would say be transparent because then we are giving some kind of a, a leave for everybody to pick and choose right. we want to bring everybody to a very basic level do not miss anything <laughs> include every even you work for as imran said one day just tell us that's all tell us and languages for sure you know like english is our um, primary language you have to be fluent understanding properly right. writing skills and uh, but the other languages will come into play handy and they are a big asset mm. as well so do you have to write some essay or something in there too like you know when you're filling out the application yeah so so part of our application is to complete uh online testing okay. um so it's a certificate called uh, tnt mm -hmm. uh so tnt justice consulting is uh the company that uh provides the third party testing mm. uh and so it is a basic skills test uh okay. it is done online uh and so all applicants to the rcmp need to complete that testing okay. so what is the objective Imran Bhai, for that test like uh, what is the outcome that you guys uh, want to see basically? Yeah, so it, it tests a, a variety of different things, but it's mm. it's really important for basic skills. Okay. So again, we're not looking for people who have a degree in law mm. or experience as a police mm -hmm. officer somewhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. We're looking for people who have basic skill sets, spelling, right. grammar, uh, okay. as Kasper Bay said, English, um, being able to read paragraphs, understand what they're saying. Uh, there's not an essay portion of it per se, but mm -hmm. it's very important for uh, someone uh, in order to pass to be able to communicate in English. Or is this French. a multiple choice or is it like you have to write like like some sort of a, you know, like you are writing an essay on Word? Yeah, so, it is, like so it is multiple choice. Multiple choice, okay. Yeah. That's, that's it's, it's basically bringing that, what is the comprehension of the English um, mm -hmm. language? Right. You know, obviously English language is enriching when of it comes course. to literature, yeah. but we are not looking into that deep, mm -hmm. but we only, we only want to know that somebody is understanding and is able to fluently right. express himself as well. Okay. <laughs> is there any other key element that you want to tell our viewers, like in the application process? We we'll talk about, you know, filling up the, the, the companies they have worked for, plus uh, this multiple choice stuff. Is there any, any other thing? Yeah, so uh, the RCMP is a little unique, uh, okay. specifically here in Ontario. Uh, all uh, applicants to the RCMP go through what we uh, polygraph, uh, okay. or what most people uh, rec identify as. And this as, is part of the application this process. This is part of the application process. Okay. So the and, polygraph yeah. is, is um, what most people refer to uh, a lie detector. Yeah. Um, and it uh, is very nerve wracking. I, I went through a polygraph <laughs> I went through an arbor, uh, a polygraph so it is uh, I understand uh, and we get this from applicants who are, who get very very nervous right okay no one is perfect I've made mistakes uh, as are, you've made but we've Same. all made mistakes yeah. right what we're looking for from uh, police officers is people who say listen I made a mistake right here's what the mistake was and here's what i learned from it and so the polygraph is an, a, another section of our application process where applicants may get very very nervous about is it the second stage of your application or no it, it's it's probably about the middle okay middle uh, the middle so, <laughs> so 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 let's take this way i'm okay. a new i'm a new person who wants to get to rcmp i yeah. fill out the application yeah. i told you guys about my company and and i and i and i passed the multiple choice too yeah in the second stage you know uh, that's where you guys are going to call me for a, a poly... Uh... Uh, uh, no, so that's probably about stage four or five. Uh, okay. Probably about stage five. Okay. So, so normally what happened is, uh, well, what happens with our applicants is they'll complete that testing we talked about, that okay. multiple choice that's question. Done. So yeah. that's done. Uh, we, all our applicants go through a mandatory career presentation. So we okay. do that uh, virtually at this point. Okay. Uh, and so they sign on and uh, uh, recruiters like myself, we explain what the rest of the process looks like. Mm -hmm. We also make sure that our applicants understand our relocation policy mm -hmm. uh, and really understand what being an RCMP officer is like, because it's very different than potentially what they assume a police mm -hmm. officer does, right? You so, want to make sure that, <laughs> that they understand the job in a real world kind of a thing. Yes. So, so they are, are they ready or not? Exactly. That's the objective. And, that, and that's exactly the objective. Yeah. And obviously, you know, when it comes to job and then we certainly expect, there are some expectations mm -hmm. as a, as an RCMP right. um, officer. Um, and the mobility, mobility is the first issue. Like if you are able to move mm -hmm. anywhere and be given orders mm -hmm. and that's where we want to make sure, you know, like, yes, everybody is understanding okay. that. So that's the second stage. You call the person and, and because he has crossed the, the first stage, 
Now the second stage, you're calling, telling them about the job, taking him into confidence that, you know what, this is the stuff you're going to be exposed, you're going to be exposing to. Yes. Are you ready for it? Yes. Right. So Absolutely. what's the third stage of application? So the third stage would be that selection package. So that's okay. where they would tell us about where they've lived, all their uh, okay. schooling, okay. all their uh, employment, mm -hmm. and they'll fill out. Uh, it's a, it's, it, 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 it is quite lengthy. It ends up being about 100 pages worth of uh, information. Wow. Yeah. So it, it is quite so, intensive. So that 100 pages <laughs> would cover or entail... Uh, like, is it some sort of a, like a maths question or something? No, no. Is it some sort of like all of your information? I it would is, say, right? it is all of your information. Wow. So where you've lived, worked, where you've gone to school, uh, the jobs you've had, uh, the training you have gotten. What about your family? Yep. We're going to talk, we're going to ask you about, uh, your spouse, your parents, your, okay. uh, brothers, your sisters, uh, your children. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's, we don't just look at yourself. We mm -hmm. look at the entirety of your family and, and really your friends as well, right? Okay. So who you, who you surround yourself with is very important mm. as a police officer you know you're held to a high standard very high right. standard so right. we want to make sure that the people you surround yourself with your friends wow. are law-abiding citizens as well so it is not just about so, you it's about everybody <laughs> that's else very as well. interesting so the second test i uh, second stage i know what you're saying the third stage 100 pages how much time it takes to uh, to scrutinize those information or process those information and get back to the to the to so, the to the applicant. So what will happen is that will be happening continuously. Okay. Um, so that'll be reviewed. We'll make sure the information is, is correct, accurate, is yeah. accurate, and then so that we spend a bit of time on that one. Mm -hmm. While that's happening, you're still moving through the process. Okay. Okay. So the next step in the process is that mandatory presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually done virtually. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll set up with uh, the people at this point because of COVID. It's yeah. all done virtually via video. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll usually get a group of maybe fifteen or twenty. Uh, applicants at that point okay, and we'll give them the information uh, so you have to present something or you yeah okay. yeah so i have a presentation i go through uh to make sure uh, i answer all of the questions and again it's really so that they have a realistic uh, understanding of what the rest of the application looks like okay what being an rcmp officer looks okay. like what our training looks like but what about that polygraphic test? Yeah. It will happen in the fourth stage? It, uh, it will happen in the fifth stage. Oh, fifth yeah. stage. Okay. So we do do two telephone interviews as well. So, okay. Uh, the first one is a review of your application. Hmm. Um, we review your application with you. And this is all done via the, over the phone. <laughs> so we go review your application with you. We also give you an opportunity to tell us about anything you may have left out. So hmm. this becomes very important in a polygraph stage, hmm. right? Because the polygraph is designed um, not uh, as a crystal ball. Hmm. It's really to verify. It's a truth is, verification tool. Is your polygraphic test is not about the 100 pages that you fill? It, it is a, a portion China, of that, right? yes. I, I, yeah. So yes, I'll, yeah. So I'll, I'll touch base. It's why we do all this and why we need it mm. is that we want a true assessment of a person that who they are and who they want to be and how they look like. Obviously, I look always. I'll I'll, I'll tell myself I'm a very good person. Yeah. I'm a lot. Um, we, we, in my language citizen. of cybersecurity, we call it anomaly. Yes. So right. we want to make sure uh, when we say that do not leave anything yeah. about you. Yeah. It's very important. It's very important. Yes. <laughs> That's a key point, I would say. And it, it's not that we are we are kind of digging into oh. your privacy, but we want to know there is when when an, an employer and especially uh, RCMP comes to oh. uh, and you applied for to be empl employed with RCMP, oh. we want to know you your in and outs. We want to know you tr your true self. Right. And right. that's the reason. Perfect. Perfect. So. <laughs> I want you to summarize for my viewers. So like, I know there's so many things. Yeah. So I would say like, there are five stages, I would say, if I understand o right. Well, overall, there are actually uh, seven stages. Seven stages. De depending on how you want to yeah. uh, account for it. Seven, so, seven to eight So stages. starting from <laughs> filling out an application. So so the, yeah. your first step would be to get that TNT certificate. Okay. That's the online That's testing. That's number one. That's number one. Stage one, okay. Uh, stage number two is you yeah. would apply through the Government of Canada website. So our job posting is on the Government of Canada website. Okay. Um, so you would apply to that. Okay. Right. So you fill out all those basic details. Uh, you, you you fill out basic information. Yeah. All right. So that's stage uh, number two. That's stage number two. Stage number three uh, would be a mandatory career presentation. Uh -huh. All right. So that's where we would do a video uh, chat with you okay, and a group of other stage people. Number three. Uh, stage number four would be the selection package. So that's about that hundred page pages of documents, okay, documents that yeah. we'll go through. 
Uh, stage number five, uh, five is, uh, well, five and six, I guess, are, are yeah. telephone interviews. Telephone so interview. the first one is, uh, again, a review of the information you've given us mm. thus far. Uh, stage, the other telephone interview we do is actually a competency-based interview. So, so this what is sort where, of question that you are looking for? In yeah, that? so what we're looking for is to assess your competencies. The competencies we are looking for to, to make good RCMP officers, good police officers, mm. teamwork, being able to deal with difficult situations, mm. uh, leadership. Um, you know, we're gonna have you tell us about examples of how you show tackle different scenarios. How you tackle different scenarios, exactly, right? right? Um so we do have a prep guide online on our website. Okay. And we send that to applicants before the interview and we say prepare. And that's really the other key. So those guide will include those sort uh, sort of scenarios based kind of a question. They're going to explain uh how we want your how we want you to discuss your scenarios. Okay. So we have a very specific sort of answering method that mm -hmm. we'd like you to use use and really it sounds very confusing but really all it is so is about telling us if a i ask you give me a yep. use case about when you were going through this yeah so uh you know one of the one of the examples uh well i can't i, I can't speak to specific questions yeah, yeah. um yeah, but uh, you know the, so one of those examples i, I, I sort of I, I sort of use is you know we'll, we'll ask you about a about will ask you to tell us about a time where you've shown excellent leadership abilities. Okay. And so, you know, we get a lot of young people, people just out of university who say, well, I've never really had a job. How do yeah. I show that I have teamwork? And I say, well, you I mean you've worked in teams all the all through your entire university Even in the career. sport, like I even in sport, yeah. right? Yeah. So you, yes, know, we, you want to say something? Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, definitely. No, that this is a very, very um, close to my heart um, process of the interview. Um, that I used most of the competencies uh, from my cricketing background. The, you took in that the as an example. Field, yes. Yeah. You know, I learned everything. Obviously, you know uh, how do uh, teamwork is obviously the first of one, course. and then how you you lost and you come back again next day to play and to win. Yeah. And how you manage that. And, you That's know, I good. was talking in last interview too, you know, you, you have to work um, within the given team. Mm -hmm. You have to work on their powers and their, their strong points. And you know, when you know them that, oh, they are weak on something, you can try to avoid not to be exposed to the, the those weak points somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I had a, a kind of a compliment from my interviewer that uh, he, he said, I've, I've been interviewing from last 21 years and I have not seen a person using these competencies uh, uh, yeah. from your cricketing field or from your playing ground. Seriously, I have a feeling like if, any other person would go in in this scenario he's going to probably tell the way imran bhai was saying that oh i have not been exposed to how would i yeah. answer this question yeah. right and and, that's and, the, and you have you've US used a very like i would say as i said you know yeah. what we ask is for your day-to-day -day life where you <coughs> actually yeah. learned yeah you know and that could be anything is, your, is your it probably between team. between the brother and sister right something yes, would happen right. how did you and cope up with it right yes. and, and that's and that potentially could be one of your yeah. examples or how you dealt with a family member a family or, members, or difficult right? people when someone how, is angry right yes. how do you calm that person right exactly yes. and that potentially could be an example okay. so really what it what it comes to when an interview and uh so we lose some people during the interview process or, or because they do exactly what i said they they get very nervous about they not having an example and right. and really the key key for our interview is preparation. Perfect. Viewers, we have to take a break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break. Thanks. Viewers, welcome back after the break, and you are watching Awareness with Fahad, and I have with me with my guest, Kassar Chaudhary and Imam Said, who works for RCMP. Uh, so before going on a break, we were talking about the example of our sport, right, that you were talking about. What about after fifth and sixth stage, the seventh stage, the poly... Polygraph. Polygraph, sorry. Yes. The polygraph, uh, you want to share some high level stuff about polygraph, like what uh, things yeah. they are looking for? Yeah, so really we're not looking for anything. It's okay. I like to describe it as the easiest step in the process. Okay. You only have to do two things. You have so to do, don't get worried about the polygraphic test. It's not, yeah. it's not there to scare you, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right? So you only have I mean. to do two things, right? Yeah. You have to show up on time yeah. and you have to be 100% truthful. That's all. That's you have right. to be real. You have to be. You have That's to, very easy. It's very easy. And, and you have already put all all those details into the form that Correct. you have filled it out, right? Correct. Before, right? Okay, guys. I mean, I mean. So seven stages, right? So that's perfect. Okay. Now, suppose 
I'm selected and okay. I'm going to the training, right? Yes. So how are you gonna you're gonna tell my viewers about the training? What happens after the seventh stage? Like, okay, I'm selected, now we'll go from there. Okay. So the seventh stage is the polygraph. Yeah. And again, it's <laughs> depending on how we number them. So there's actually an eighth stage, uh, which is a medical and uh okay. that's the last stage. The last stage is a medical, medical. sort of uh combined together as a, a medical, a security clearance, and a background investigation. How much time does it take to do that? So the our entire process okay. is on the long side. Okay. Uh, uh, applicants realistically should anticipate 12 to 15 months. Okay. So it is a very lengthy process and the longest step in the process is actually that uh, field investigation security clearance because okay. we potentially could have to go overseas to oh, interview this. people or uh, communicate with companies or references overseas okay. depending on where you're coming from etc so that potentially could take some time right yeah. so 12 to 15 months uh in the from the moment you apply to the time you're successful 12 to 15 uh, months 12 to 15 months <laughs> and then the training part will come where you will yeah. say you're selected correct now you're going to the training correct Okay, now, uh, Boy, I as, think I would. Uh, as Imran said, it's it's this is important for from um, RCMP point of view yeah. because we want to check your references and we want to check whatever you said. Mm. It, it, it's it's, it's true. according to yeah. the as you described. Yeah, and uh, I, I was smirking or smiling because my process took me almost about twenty eight months plus a six months training. So it's two years. Wow. Uh, but I was committed, as I said, I was yeah. committed. I have to get into RCMP. <laughs> what was your reaction when, when somebody called you, you were selected? It was unbelievable, unmatchable. I trust, I, I still have uh, those feelings. Uh, I have the goosebumps, you know, first time. Nice. I was, uh, it's amazing, you know, because you get the confidence. The, uh, what is more important is that it's telling me that I'm the right person going towards the right direction. And I have all that confidence mm. that I've made it until here. Right. It's very important, specifically from training point of view, that after I this, think. you have six months of training. Yeah. But that confidence that you made it through here, yeah. I was told that when I applied that they had about 28,000 applicants from all over Canada. And, and how we, many were selected? 32 people were selected out of that. Oh my God. So it see it was there are two such points. A, yeah, it was very hard. I would say, like as I said, time. there are two points to look at it. Yeah. The one point is very hard. The second point is you made it. Amazing, yeah. seriously, guys. It's really amazing. Yeah. Like, so our like, usual attrition is, you know, about one in ten to fifteen. Mm -hmm. So one applicant in ten or fifteen, uh, on average, over the year, uh, make it through the entirety of the application process oh. and then go to training. They don't necessarily passed all the training for a number of different reasons, but you know, one in 10. So, you know, they're, you know, 10%. So when, when they call you that you're selected, so how much time they give it to you that, oh, pack your bag, right? You have to go for a training. Uh, it's, it's a, as I said, it's a very involved process throughout from st step one yeah. until you've been selected. Yeah. And uh, you have conversation with your, uh, uh, you know, recruiter at that what time. And they tell you basically ahead of time, they, they, they will prepare you. Okay, you know, you might probably be coming next two months mm -hmm. or next three months. So get ready. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it leads you towards mm -hmm. your, um, obviously, as I, as Imran said, that mm -hmm. we are there to help and we want everybody, whoever we selected, mm -hmm. to be successful. So the recruiter works very closely mm -hmm. and they, once you get onto the process, they know yeah. you very well. So even in the training, like uh, suppose Imran Bhai is hiring someone, so he's going to be like, like uh, kind of a, you know, a mentor for that, for that person, even throughout the training too? Not necessarily. Yeah. So, uh, we sort of separate, um, uh, the jobs, right? Okay. So, uh, when Kasa went through the application process, he had, a, uh, an analyst who went, who worked mm -hmm. with his application, helped him through the entire application. Uh, my job was to get Kasa to the application point and answer any questions he had right. while he's in the application. Right. Once you get to our training academy, we have the some of the best trainers in the world. Uh, they're all uh, RCMP yeah. officers. And so their job is to train you to be a police officer. Uh, so, you know, if you have difficulties in our training, that's to be expected. They're there to help you. Uh, yeah, so tell that. us about your first four weeks. I would love to know about that. You know, I, all I heard, I, what is since my, throughout my life, I do not, you know, I do not make too many questions what's coming to, uh, from other people because I have my own perception and I deal with according mm. to my own powers and whatever mm. I have within me. So sometimes, you know, when you ask too many questions, too many yeah. people, you will get scared. You will not 
be able to do your so you, best. You were kind of an active listener at that time, I would say. Yes, I do listen, but I, as I said, I don't ask too many questions. Whenever there's a question need to ask, you always raise your hand. But That's definitely, what I yes. want to know about this. I want to, I want to uh, bring it to the uh, right. point that over six months training, because as we are, uh, we are uh, rooted from um, um, Royal uh, British Army. Mm -hmm. So we, par we are part of that and we take uh, all, that's why we are called the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Mm -hmm. um, so right. all our training is kind of a military based. Um, so in Pakistan, especially, they call it uh, going to Kakul. Yeah. <laughs> so the first yeah, eight yeah. to 10 weeks are the similar. Similar feeling. Yes. Uh, people will going to yell at you. There are some certain uh, rules, rules and regulations. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. You, are, you have to mark in, you have to do the. Uh, so uh, what what time you were waking up and and, uh, and and what time you went to bed? That's the toughest one. Six in the morning and 11, um, 10 or 11 in the evening. Wow. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting physically, mm -hmm. mentally and academically. So that was till when you start and till, till you end the training? Or it was like, like for next two months, it was like that. Then there's a different training. So... The timing. Yeah. So, uh, so fluctuate. overall, the, the training is very intensive. Mm. Um, you know, the first couple of months is a lot of it is spent on, uh, like very physical training. Um, okay. so, you know, the pressure is, you know, ratcheted up. Yeah. So it is quite, uh, yeah. it is quite a lot of pressure. Yeah. There's a really a lot of pressure throughout the, uh, training because, mm. I mean, you might be learning brand new skills. You may not have any experience as a police officer in the military, as wow. a security guard. Um, you know, you might have come from an IT profession background and now you're being trained how to how to wear a uniform, how to march, how to polish mm. uh, your boots, how to make your bed, how to you know how to shoot a gun, all those sorts of things. So it's very very different for each individual person, and so there is a purpose to that. There is a method. Uh, the reason why we ratchet pressure because as frontline police officers, mm. Gosser and myself. We don't have the option of taking a break, right? We don't have the option of calling a timeout. Uh, you know, potentially there could be very volatile or very serious, dangerous situations happening in front of us. Well, we're expected to respond 100%. No questions <laughs> and asked. And the teacher is watching you. How are you, gonna, how are you responding to it? And that's exactly, exactly. it. As Imran said, in law enforcement, they always say, that, you know, when you expect the least is going to be your testing time. When you are not ready, when you are... Physically like tired, give us a, sorry, give us example of like like where you do the real stuff, you know, like we see in the movie kind of a thing, right? <laughs> oh, quite and, a few. and then the teacher is watching you, and then he's yeah. calling you after the after your your yeah. you know like yeah. whatever so, you're doing. So, so one of the one yeah. of the one of the I found yeah. one of the funnest parts of training <laughs> um, is you know we have buildings, we have cars, we have uh, houses, and they're all set up in uh, in in to do scenarios. And yeah, so scenario we hire yeah. yeah, so we we hire actors to come in and they oh, act really? out scenarios with oh, you. Oh, oh. And it could be something simple like you know some someone lost their cat or lost uh, lost lost a property or they could be very volatile and violent situations Go and, find it. and so you're having to deal with that situation mm -hmm. while you're being uh you know while people so probably are they're, you. they're training you as a policeman too like okay if you catch someone what questions you're going to ask how are you going to treat that person right and absolutely also. yep that's how it is as, as i said yeah. they are paid actors and uh, they don't leave you or they don't want to give you any discount they act as they're supposed to be because and, they're yeah, um, getting paid for it yeah. yes and my first uh, we the scenario was that um, uh, I have a very loud voice uh, and very first scenario was how to get a person kind of a separated two people. And, mm. uh, you know, as soon as I reached, uh, arrived to the, to the scenario and I yelled like police and everybody else all over my colleagues and my supervisor and teachers, they were like, they were kind of shocked. Where did that voice come from? <laughs> <laughs> and but what happened? Yeah. Uh, next few scenarios, or let's say next few uh, after a few weeks, they got to learn that I always use that voice, <laughs> and they starting to uh, pick on that voice. Like, okay, you are now you want to be a police officer, and that's real, you know. Like when right. we, we when we um, respond to the calls, and people do get offended uh, by. That voice too, that mm. why are you yelling or why are you shouting at me? And it's amazing. It's interesting. That's nice. What about what about the like a learning experience? Like mm -hmm. uh, what subject they teach you? Like, of course, there is a there is a like a you know a drill or all those things that mm -hmm. you guys do. But besides that, in terms of reading, writing, you know, what sort of uh, things that, that they teach you? Like 
like psychology of of like those courses and all those uh, stuff too or basically it's a bit of everything it's okay. not a, just one kind of training mm-hmm. it's a dynamic uh, okay. it's a, we we have like you know we have ground fighting we have uh, boxing we have um, over PTSD we call it over your uh, fighting skills fighting on the grounds and how okay. to rest uh, it, it it comes and then at the same time we will have uh, what we're shooting started as well okay. um, uh, about the guns and how to how to okay. carry it on basically you know like carrying a gun it's a huge responsibility you know you have uh, if, if i have the uh, 40 uh, bullets with me and a handgun and if mm-hmm. somebody else get into that handgun mm-hmm. that won't be good for for first for me yeah. for sure but for for the public as well so like how you control your emotion right it, when somebody it, is like emotions plus your your yeah. uh, how you to be Uh, vigilant about that and uh, where to use it where not to use it what's your uh nice. what's your last response and what should be your first response, first response. when when you're uh, responding to a scenario <laughs> what about uh, in terms of like it stuff did they like teach you something on that uh, aspect too yeah so i mean uh, obviously we use computers uh basically daily and uh, for the okay. most part um and so we use other technologies as well so uh, you know having some basic computer skills yes. being able to type uh being able being familiar with uh the, the sort of major um software mm-hmm. uh is what we're looking for okay. uh, again we're looking for we're looking to make your mold you into being a frontline police officer mm-hmm. we have other units and we talked about them last time and mm-hmm. uh such as cyber crime units and yeah. tech crime units there there'll be more specialized training right mm-hmm. so you know if you do have an IT background that's fantastic mm-hmm. uh but even if you don't we will teach you um a lot of the skills so that you need <coughs> I'm 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 like a cyber security yes. professional right So if I go there and and they they look at me saying oh this guy know like already about cyber security. Yeah. So they like they will change my course content a little bit and then say okay since this guy know about that I'll, no. no. No we don't, right? Okay. And there, and there there is a reason for that. Okay. Everyone is trained to a basic standard, to a set standard. Okay. Um everyone operates as a frontline police officer. That is your first and primary job. You are a frontline police officer. wearing a uniform potentially uh responding to calls and the reason for that is uh, as our cmp officers mm-hmm. gazer myself we can be called upon to go to another area to another city to mm-hmm. another province mm-hmm. and to operate as frontline police officers and so we need those basic skills how to operate the police vehicles how to operate our, our radios uh how to arrest people uh the criminal code how to how to report right um so all those things are very very mm-hmm. important right because as uh police officers for the National Police Service of Canada mm. we potentially could be called upon and sent somewhere else in the country i spent a month in uh, nova scotia nice. uh to assist the um you know my colleagues in nova scotia last year uh and i was able to do that because every single one of us gosser myself all the members who came before us and who come after us are all trained to the exact same standard what about like have you guys or any of your coworker gone to us for training too or Yeah so, sort of- yeah so we have had members travel across the world, the world. uh and and obtain training in uh in you know whatever it happens to be so if there's a specific skill set that another country does better than we do mm-hmm. uh then you know we will send uh, our RCMP officers to that particular country to go through that training mm-hmm. and then bring those skills back to right. the RCMP you want to add something Kasabi Yeah, no, but as as uh, Imran said that uh, basically Bob, I was reading to and obviously I got to know before too that mm-hmm. we are the second line of defense in Canada and even if, if after military if we need it we are ready to march. Yeah, okay. We that's oh. the basic training and the basic basic line that we have to fulfill. So your standard is kind of a matching with with the with the military. kind of we have to be ready. Yeah. We yeah. basically we call it reserve uh, officer. Yes, it, right? we we only RCMP being called the veterans, and it's because of that that we are second line of defense. Second line of defense. Okay, I see. Uh, so the training is, uh, I know, last time you said twenty six week or something. Correct. So how do you know <laughs> that? Like in training, also there are stages. For example, okay, in three months, my teacher would know that oh, this guy is not performing well. 
Yeah, so I think we have to send it back. So we do testing and scenario based uh, testing throughout the uh, throughout the training. So, you know, we'll identify if you have issues and, and everyone has issues. No one is so going to be perfect. Some sort right? of a review kind of a thing or yeah. check uh, like every two months, three months. Or yeah. So we normally do a review about the three month mark okay. and then just before graduation, just before that six months. So about two weeks. So the person will get an idea. OK, I'm doing good. Yes. Now I'm going to move. You want to and say? normally, we every day in, in in our class environment, we have almost um, uh, seven to mm -hmm. to four as a class environment, mm -hmm. and in that uh, we have three or four uh, teachers uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, sitting with us and observing our answers mm -hmm. to just to see that if I'm absorbing the knowledge, if mm -hmm. I'm understanding or not. So they it's very closely watched. They mm -hmm. will come to you very soon, very quickly. Very quickly. Uh, we don't leave it for that long. Let's say two months after mm -hmm. uh, we they will come to you a uh, very early stage and telling them or asking you what's going on, um, mm -hmm. uh, what happened. Were you not ready have, for have that? Have you guys you... faced any scenario where someone like it's fine after three months he has some medical issues? What would happen to that person? Yeah, so I mean, injuries do happen yeah. during our training. It is very, very physically demanding. So, right. you know, we unfortunately have mm -hmm. uh, members who do uh, get injured during our training. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the injury. So if they need to be sent home to rehabilitate, uh, to, to, you know, if they need surgery or whatever it happens to mm -hmm. be, hopefully, uh, they can, we'll basically recycle them. So they'll come back to the training academy after they are medically cleared. So, mm -hmm. you know, injuries do happen. But again, at this point, remember, We've invested a lot of time and money to get you to our to training you, academy. Okay. Um, so we want you to be successful. So again, like Azar said, so they will come back. So after. so you know they will come back after they're medically cleared mm -hmm. from an injury, uh, uh, or if they're unsuccessful in some portion of the training, uh, they have the option of uh, you know potentially reapplying and and then coming back to the training Perfect. after Perfect. working on the That's skill good. sets That's that good. they need to. So again, we you want to say something? Yes, or? I just want to add on. Can too. I take a break and then we come back? <laughs> Uh, viewers, we have to take a break and we will be back after the break. Keep watching Awareness with Fahad. Welcome back, uh, guys. After the break, you're watching Awareness with Fahad and I agree with my guest uh, Imran and Kasser. So before going on a break, we were talking about the training. Remember, you were saying something so, about the training. Sometimes they assess you, as I said, they assess you um, every day by day and mm. they will offer you maybe to back troop maybe for, uh, let's, let's say, two mm. weeks behind mm -hmm. or four weeks behind mm -hmm. um, just to get you to the last stage so you can absorb more knowledge and you come back uh, uh, good. Good, okay. Uh, so now, <laughs> suppose you have done the training. Now, uh, last time I know you guys told me that you will go to work as a policeman, right? Correct. So uh, <clears throat> what what happened during that process? Like how, like you, you like, is there like a like passing ceremony or something after you get the training? I just, I know these are very precious moments, right? So. No, and, and, and they are really important. Uh, yeah. I mean, you've invested 26 weeks in training, potentially two or three years yeah. in the application process. So it is very important for us as the organization to really acknowledge that, right? To mm -hmm. acknowledge the extreme amount of work you've mm -hmm. gone in of to course, graduate yeah. to, yeah. you know, so there is a, there is a full ceremony. Um, your family is invited there. My family came, uh, you know, uh, sort of. Sure your family came yes, so my my dad, uh, my dad came all the way from Pakistan. Oh, sure. Yeah, he okay. passed away in 2019, no, no, no. In 2014. Uh, that was a huge moment for me, yeah. for him too, coming all the way. And it was announced basically. It was told on the graduation ceremony that we have a person that came from all the way from Pakistan just wow. for this graduation ceremony. Really, graduating ceremony. Yeah. You will never forget. For I sure, know, it, it's just yeah. pinned into my eyes. I know. So, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, the, yeah. during that graduation, yeah. you know, you'll be given uh, your, your graduate certificate. You'll be given your badge. Uh, at that point, you'll know where you're being posted to. Uh, but it's an opportunity for your family to see where you've been living for 26 mm -hmm. weeks, to understand some of the training you've gone to, some of the hardships that you have gone through. Mm -hmm. uh, and So really where you were posted, Ranbay and Kasser? It's interesting. Right? Yeah, so so I was a little different than Kasser. Uh, you know, I was posted to British Columbia, okay. uh, to a large attachment in British Columbia. So did they, uh, did they tell you, like, okay, you, I'm, we are posting you for six months or something. Yeah, so so about uh, halfway through training, okay. uh, what you start with, you write down sort of what province you'd like to go to. Okay. Um, oh. And to the preferences. So okay. in terms of your preference, yeah. Okay. So about 95% of members get their first, second, or third choice in terms of province. Mm -hmm. uh, about a week after you've selected the, what provinces you'd like to go to, mm -hmm. we'll confirm what province you're going to go to. And then you'll write down detachments within that province you'd like to go to. So mm -hmm. you'll look at a map. 
You'll talk to your troop mates. You may talk to your family, uh, and you'll write down detachments in that province. Right. So about ninety five percent of members you? get yeah. uh, get the first yeah, choice. That's Imran said that I was I was lucky about because I was hired from Rajasthan, Saskatchewan. Okay, so where the training happens, my my kids, my family was about ten five minutes drive from there. Oh wow! And I have the the luxury to see them almost every day. Mines. So and then at that at that time when I asked to pick for the Ontario, I was given the choice. Nice. <laughs> So you guys going to start, suppose you guys have started being a policeman. So what was your feeling like, okay, when you went to the real world? Yeah. So it's, um, you know, I, I like to, I, I call it scary. Uh, other people say it's, you know, makes you nervous, but I, I like to be honest. Um, you know, it's scary. You, you've got all this training, but now you're actually you're a police officer. Real. Now you're actually, these are, real people. these are real people and they really expect you to be a police officer. And if yeah. they don't, they have no idea if you've been a police officer for a day or 10 years. They don't care. Yeah. They just see a police officer. For them, officer. it's just a police. It's, you're just a police officer, right? So, you know, it is very nerve wracking yeah. to be up to work as a frontline police officer. And so that's how I started. So there's career. someone watching you, <laughs> for example. I was, like, like I was coming to that. Yeah. Yes, I was coming to yeah. that. We have a six month coaching program. Mm -hmm. You will be uh, shadowing with an experienced officer. Okay. And, uh, will be trained on the job as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever the finishing points are, where you lack in, uh, it'll be very closely watching. Uh, you're going to go with the partner. <laughs> so <laughs> what sort of you, you think you would need like a skills? Uh, I know you guys have gone through the training, mm -hmm. but what do you think that, okay, you sh you know, whoever is going to go to the mm -hmm. being a policeman has to worry about, like I would say top five or top six, top 10, something, yeah. you know? So some of the really, really important ones is, is really communication skills, okay. right? Being able to talk and listen to people okay. uh, is very important. I mean, uh, you know, 99% of being a police officer, whether that's in a, um, you know, organized crime unit mm. or a frontline policing unit is just about talking to people. So, you know, having communic excellent, really great communication skills is So really sometimes normally I've seen people have, have a problem listening carefully. Some people have problem understanding the language, mm -hmm. you know, fully, right? Yeah. What do you guys do in that scenario? So again, it would really depend on, we expect you to come to us uh, having already, uh, have, already having very excellent communication skills. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're going to work on those skills. So, you know, I spent years uh, as a frontline so police officer. Suppose somebody's speaking Hindi or Urdu, right? Yeah. So <laughs> will they get a task there? Suppose you, like, there's a problem, right? The guy yeah. is not understanding, right? Yes. And he's not listening to you because he doesn't understand, right? Yes. What do you guys do in that's that scenario? Probably it's, it's hard to explain in, 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 in a minute or two. Yeah. That's the training that takes us six months. That's where we got prepared for. Yeah. Exactly. Dealing with all the situations. Yeah. Exactly the way, the, way. The, the RCMP wanted to Perfect. be. And the second thing is that every RCMP officer mm. has the quality of paying attention to the details. And those six months are specifically about that. About that. You are paying attention to the details. Right. And if you are not understanding, you are not shy to ask it again. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat? Mm -hmm. So these right. are very specific. So you, you do this uh, uh, police exercise, or, or I would say like, uh, like uh, you know, what the training is you're about in the real world is about for like year or something or, or six months. Okay. Yeah. So when you leave the training Academy, yeah. uh, you're with a coach officer for six months. Six months. Um, okay. So depending on the individual, depending mm -hmm. on the circumstances, mm -hmm. you may ride, basically ride with that coach officer for three or four months. So mm -hmm. every call you go to your coach officer is there. So if guys are, was my coach officer, we would go to a call. He would be there with me and he would be evaluating me. He mm -hmm. would also, more importantly, he'd be helping me grow and he would be teaching me and making sure I'm, so I'm doing when, the right So when things. you guys decide that, okay, uh, suppose you are his, his uh, coach officer, yeah. right? <laughs> when you're going to decide that, okay, uh, Kasser is, is very good for, for, for airport investigative officer, right? Yep. When you guys will decide after it's, four months or? I will add on to this. It's, yeah. it's just not specifically we recommend. Yeah. We are, we, we have some competency lists. Okay. Uh, on behaviors on, and some, uh, basic points. Yeah. That officer will going to say, yes, he's good in that. He's good in that. Oh. He's good in that. And it's the, uh, the analytical side that, that they will uh, see that where I could be the perfect fit. Mm -hmm. And then my aspirations to where I want to move. Okay. So okay. it becomes this combination of a few things. Nice. Okay, uh, what about like, uh, is there any other stuff you think we have left, uh, like we didn't discuss, do you think that you want to tell our viewers that, and then, you know, summarization, like I know, uh, you know, we have discussed so many things, but do you want to summarize for our viewers that 
okay, these things are, are very key stuff, you know, yeah. out of all those stages that we have discussed. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, uh, obviously, we want uh, people to be completely transparent. Pastor and myself, we, we sort of yeah. spoke about that. So to be very honest and transparent with it, it is very, very important. Uh, again, we're not looking for perfect people. We know people have made mistakes, mistakes yeah. um, but we're not looking for those people because they don't exist. Right. Um, so, you know, being very, very transparent and honest with us is, is really important uh, to really work work on communication skills, both orally, being able to talk to people, being able to understand and listen, mm -hmm. actively listen to people. Also written communication. We take mm -hmm. a lot of notes. Uh, we do a lot of reports. Everything we do is um, is documented. Um, so, you know, that's where computer skills come in handy right. uh, or be are very important and mm -hmm. also written uh, skills. So being right. able to articulate what you have done and why you've done those things are Remember, very important. Is there any upcoming seminar or something? How people could know about it? Like suppose somebody is really interested after watching our interview like how they can they can reach you guys yeah i hope there i hope there are a lot of people interested yeah. um you know so we do seminars or we do career presentations on a basically a weekly basis weekly basis um and it's a virtual uh, and they're all being done virtually at this okay. point um so i would encourage anyone who's interested mm -hmm. uh to go to rcmpcareers.ca which is okay. our primary website mm -hmm. uh in our website under recruiting events we have all the recruiting events across the country listed mm -hmm. i would highly encourage anyone who's even remotely interested mm -hmm. to go to one of those seminars it is all done virtually and to listen to what the application process looks like listen to the basic skill sets mm -hmm. and try to see if this is a career fit for them because okay. it is very important you want to add something i just want to add like you know it's, it's a basic question you're going to ask yourself that are you be easy doing what you like to be a police officer yeah. for eight to ten 12 hours every day yeah and if if you say yes then start building on what you need and that's where your process will gonna start. Right. And the main thing is you once you get into the process, every step you pass is a confidence that you know what RCMP has contacted me. Mm -hmm. They have recognized that I have all the possible um, uh, qualities that they are looking for and in, uh, into an officer. And you start building on that. And as soon as mm -hmm. you get into uh, the depth with the training session, mm -hmm. that's that's more of you know your half the job is done now. Whatever you have it. It, it was required and that's why you are being given a chance to Perfect. come to the training. And most important is that the, the, when you start your training, they want to see you growing every day, making mm -hmm. a progress where you won, where you were at day one. Right. And when you are graduating on after six months, they want to see a gradual progress that Perfect. you have uh, achieved everything and you grow where you were yesterday. And where are you standing right. today? Thank you, Kesar Bhai. Uh, my show is going, going towards the end. So I want to say uh, that, guys, I'm pretty sure the way we have, have discussed uh, with both of these officers, you guys have learned a lot. I'm pretty sure you will apply by going to the RCMP career website. And I want to thank you both of you guys to come to my show for the second episode and especially your supervisor. Right. Uh, basically, who gave me the opportunity to, to to interview both of you guys. And also, I really appreciate that you guys published my interview on your on your on your Facebook and Instagram page. Also, uh, again, guys, I would highly request everyone to please subscribe our YouTube and Facebook channel and also Instagram page. And I will come next week with another interesting topic. So keep watching. Awareness with Fahad. Thank you. <laughs>